um no it, it it had it had that like i said it was very impressive what i saw with the production and everything um i think like i said at the end of the day when we discussed last time uh you know that being a sport by building a sport i mean you have the production value there and you have great athletes there representing sports and, and you know just continue on doing what y'all do you know my hats off to y'all because you know that's this is a sport that you know is not easy. Nobody can just get off the couch and get big like that. It does take training and everything. And like Keith says, it's not about you know the supplements. It's about the training and the dieting. And I have to give my hats off to all the ladies and gentlemen who compete in that show. And um, I don't know, like I said, I'm very impressed with the production. And everything. Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty good production. Um, here, this is from my man Money J. He says. Uh, Andrea Shaw <laughs> is your girl, George. You're tripping over these other women. Hey, they're my women. Anybody, my woman. Andrea's my main girl. <laughs> but, you know, you know how it is. <laughs> this is from uh, KL. He says this. He says, uh, but guys, uh, one thing I, I don't mean no disrespect to you, David. No D pick. Stop it. Oh, man, stop that. <laughs> you know what? No D picks. Dang it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> also, this is from. Um, um, Money J says, Missy is awesome, a beast competing, yeah. Also, he says, um, Zama will be better next year, mark my words. And also, um, he says this, he says, um, he says, Christina Mendoza is the future star, too. And also, my man, um, KL says, Natalia, <laughs> Natalia got me turning into a wolf. Hey, man. <laughs> So, you know, and also this is from my man, uh, Ward, he says, George, no, now all of a sudden you are the pimp daddy of the Bible. Ah, yeah. ah. call, call, call me, call me, call me uh, you know, call me the pimp, call me, you know, Silky Johnson, you know. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, George, with all these other girls, you do know that harems are illegal, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not supposed to be. You mean, come on, man. <laughs> well, hey, hey, hey. Well, things are going down. If you don't care, they don't care. Uh, this is from Roman Warrior says, uh, uh, says uh, George, you, know, you the godfather from WWF. Yeah, you know, you know, yeah, I used to love that, you know, as a kid. But yeah, it was a pretty, I mean, some people said they had issues with the lighting and stuff like that. But yeah, think about this the biggest event, depending where you're seating it, because you know. They were already sold out of tickets by, I think, a month before the show start. And, you know, if you wasn't in the in front view, then you're in, even in the cheap seats, you know. But it was a great show. Um, I know we talked about how, again, with Sarah being the champion, now, you know, we think that this, this and we talk about it, it changes the uh, look of the division. She's now four-time champion. That means she ties with Julia McCartney. So there's nothing she needs to change, or she thinks she's just, or like, like especially Natalia, what can she do? Because, you know, it's just. You know, it's good. I was curious what, what y'all think about. Oh, go ahead, Keith. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just curious, like, Sarah is getting so big. I almost wonder if she's like, going to move up to women's bodybuilding. I, I know she loves being women's physique Olympia champ, and I think she looks terrific, but yeah, she's, so, she's really getting big, you know, so I, I don't know. What you guys think about that? I, I think here's will. the thing. I think it'll be one of those things where her and Natalia will stay in that division. It'll be kind of like a Jay and Ronnie when Jay was chasing after Ronnie for all those years, you know, and, she, yeah. and you're right. She can't get any bigger. You know, she can't, you know, so it's a it's a thing it's a thing that again with Andrea Shaw talks to Sandy and Sandy sits there and says, Hey, don't change what you're doing. You don't need to get me bigger. You just this come in consistent. And I think, you know, by her telling her that, which I hope she did, that it'll be an epic battle uh, for years to come between those two. You know, but neither one mm -hmm. of them can get me bigger because then they're gonna have to move. You know, and I don't think, you know, looking at, you know, Angela Yo and looking at Andrea Shaw and at Ashley and looking at those top five girls, you know, the one girl that probably we we won't see much of anymore is Helena and somebody else is sliding to that spot. But again, you know, maybe Christina Mendoza, 
that you, we can look at these girls right now and sit there and say they can move up. But it's, it's, it's great to say that, but when you put them in a crowd of girl, women bodybuilders, that's a whole different story. That's a whole different story. That's yeah. like people for years sitting there saying, well, should Chris Bumstead move up to men's open bodybuilding? Hell no. He know his lane. Keon just made the announcement the 212 champion and says, I am staying at 212. You know, guys like Derek and guys like Hade, who are 212 guys, moved up. But people have to understand the aesthetics of this all. When you're so tall and you're in, in, in their build and their stature, they only have so much max potential to grow. Hadi and Hadi and especially Derek are maxed out. You know, and I remember Charles Glass once telling me this when I first met him, getting in the body. I'm like, man, I want to be so much like Phil Heath. And he said, why? He said, because his max growing potential compared to like a Ronnie Coleman or a taller guy is only so much. Where this guy, Samson Dua, who's in that champion, or Andrew Jack, who was, I think, fifth place, these guys are six foot two, six foot one, six foot tall. Their, their growth potential is huge because of how tall they are. And they're they more frame. And they're bone density. Mm-hmm. People understand when you're looking at bodybuilders, in essence, you're looking at, and Charles taught me this, Glass taught me this, he was the godfather of bodybuilding, bone density matters. And it tells you your potential to grow into a sport. And if you look at in the last three years what Samson Dua has done, and even Andrew Jack for that reason a matter has done, because these are two taller guys, this is, it, this is the future of bodybuilding based off of aesthetics and bone structure. Mm-hmm. Like, there's never like how big Rami, how big he is. Now he's dominant for so while, but now he's taking a step back because he's dealing with some illness and stuff like that. Or when the year Ronnie won, you know, it's a big difference between like, you look at Ronnie Coleman or or uh, Dory Yates or Lee Haney to Arnold Schwarzenegger to Frank Zane to all those guys that were coming up over the years. And, you know, and the Phil Heaths and all those other guys. I mean, the, the sport is evolving. And, the, and like I say, the men, they, they get that little leeway where they can evolve, but the women, they don't. Well, they have and, to. And, and here's the home. thing. When you say that, George, you have to look at it this way. Andrea Shaw is probably – an inch or two inches taller than Angela Yo, right? So again, mm-hmm. there, there's that factor where Andrea Shaw can do certain things that Andrea Yo can't do in order to make her frame because as you're a shorter person, if you start doing some of the things to get bigger, you start blowing out your waistline and other things. And then, you know, am I right, Lori? You start blowing, yeah, you start out, blowing the out the aesthetic, the structure. You're blowing out the taller the you are, the more frame you have, the more muscle you can put on that frame. And keep it balanced. Exactly. So, um, when you're small, and a lot of these, um, and and um, you have to be very careful when you're small. Like a lot of people who I like to, and nothing against powerlifting, but um, you're building a physique. You're not powerlifting, so you got to pick a lane because you're gonna blow out that waist doing powerlifting moves. And I think that's that- why mm-hmm. Heather said that because Heather is probably one of the strongest women, probably the strongest woman on the earth that I've seen. You know, period. But again, her the, her squats and her deadlifts, and I had to get away from it as a football player. Will blow out your waistline. Well, that's another way. thing too. And she's the way, surrounded the by ratio, you know, like Hunter Anderson. I think she's surrounded by bodybuilders now. And they're probably telling her that they're like, yeah, "Hey, well, are absolutely. you going to power lift or are you going to build a physique? Because you can't do both. Nope, you got to pick a lane. Pick your lane." You know, Andrew, she so also like, Andrew, even now I do I do uh, I do back extensions. I do do mornings, and um, I'll do uh, like. Um, rack pulls but i don't i don't deadlift i squat but i'm also i squat to build a physique i don't squat to 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 power lift i i I, the squatting i do is very slow controlled you know to do certain things so it's a different yeah but yeah definitely back to what we're talking about the the, i think the taller you are the the large the more bone density you have even like high scene told me i have you know there's plenty of room on my frame to put more muscle as you're, if you are smaller, there's only so much frame to put so much muscle on, and then you start to you start to look like parts. Yeah, and you know, because you know, Angela also used to do powerlifting, but she stopped doing it. She, she she still trains a bit of it, but not she don't do competitive anymore because it was maybe affecting her waistline a bit. She does have I a think great. Brandon, you know. The way Brandon Ray trains her is a completely different lane than the way she was training, and even Melanie, who trains Tina, tell. In I remember her last time she was. Check your ego at the fucking door. It's not about the weight. It's about time under tension and the way we're training. And that's why Tina showed that she was she's doing half the weight that she used to do, and she is bigger. So you know, 
I try to tell people yeah. that all the time. Quit looking at this. Because it's the way she's doing your negatives and the way she's holding your bosses. And it's a- time under tension and contraction is the world of which we live in world body bill now. And, and it, it, it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't tell them all. <laughs> I got a time. Let them go out there and fumble it's, around it's, for a few it's, more it's, years. It's to be sold, not told. Is that what the, the saying is? To be sold, not yeah. told? Well, I got a yeah. comment from man, man, man Ward. It's just so yeah. stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, I got a comment from Man Ward 2000. says, I, I wish the damn uh, live stream wasn't so damn expensive. God damn, I know it's like, yeah, it's it, it's Dude, I wish much, bodybuilding but... wasn't so expensive. <laughs> That's the thing is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a uh, nosebleed seat, and it was, the nosebleed seat was like $300, you know, and um, they're just so expensive. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's worth you know, it was, for me, I but... I was talking to kids who were That's doing out of amateur range. Olympia. And they were saying that, I'm like, I was telling my friend, like, I don't know if I could afford to go pro this anymore. <laughs> These, yeah, these, yeah. I mean, we're talking. It's like crazy for the athletes. Hey, yeah. to hey, enter Lori, a show, I, just I, an amateur I, show. Lori, I felt like you when me and Tina competed. You know, two weeks in a row. That was that was ten grand right there. And I remember you talking about when you were in Romania, how much that cost. I'm like, fuck. Now I understand. You know, <laughs> two weeks of being on the road cost me ten thousand dollars. <laughs> wow. Serious. Uh, if I had ten thousand dollars, brother, I know what I can do with it. I give myself another car. Uh, here we got here from <laughs> Warrior says Natalia Cuejo has more of a look that is more appealing for WPD guidelines than Sarah's. I understand that. Also, this is from uh, Warrior. He's not a fan. That, I know he's not a fan of Natalia. So I mean, not. I mean Sarah. He says uh, Sarah looks like she put more size on her frame, crossing the bodybuilding board boundaries. If you ask me, but the judges went on to award it. Yeah, that's, you know, that's how it is sometimes. Yeah. Also, this is from. Oh, I agree man, on that. Um, uh, KL says, uh, George, I'm on the sideline uh, today and I really didn't have to do much to say. Oh, that's cool. You know, you, you come in, you know, the link's, the link's in the description. Yeah. You know, usually I see you, but I know I had so many people here. I know I'm going to have enough room. But, you know, but I think Raheem is gone. And, um, you know, if you want to step in, you step in where you're ready. Um, and, and you have to understand, you know, you know, it, it was like they say the good old boy system, you know, Sarah is in tight with some, some, hot, some hot, powerful people in IFBB, you know, so, you know, yeah, we understand that we under me and Lori at least understand the politics. And I know Lori understands the politics of the last show she just did because I was there too of the shit that happened. Me and George talk about that off air. That was kind of suspect. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you said. Uh, you got you know, a, don't yeah. be a complainer. We know what we sign up for. Yep. Um, a point that was made to me too is oftentimes, you know, like the judges. It's funny because a lot of those people, the judges see them over and over again, and as they improve, yeah. and so the eyes. So you've got politics. You've got people that they see on the regular basis, so they see them improve. So I think their eye is drawn to them. <clears throat> like, oh, I see yeah. her. This is like the third time I've seen her. Oh, she's improved. And then you get people they haven't seen in a long time, or like me, who they haven't seen at all, because this is my first show in the U.S. And um, and you know you and you you have to make it a point to um, to um, be introduce yourself, get to know the promoters so that people know who you are. But then there's, yeah, there's always a level of stuff that you just, you know, we don't complain about, but we know it's there. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, I know yep. what I signed up for. Um, it's like, I try to tell people, I don't try to dissuade people from going into the pro leagues, but I'm all, you know, when you get to any level of sport at this level, it's, you know, there's, there's, um, there's, there is, there's politics, there's coaching, there's not always sunshine and rainbows, baby. Yeah, it's not all uniform yeah. farts, that's for sure. <laughs> I say she got to suck it up, Buttercup. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is yeah, my man exactly. Ward. He says, from my man Ward, he says, um, people s- scratch their heads with the judging criteria because they they get confused. Yeah, we talk about this. Also, this is from my man Laura. Laura was there. Shout out to Laura. It says, hello, George and friends. Nice to see you, friends. I had a great time at the Olympia Expo. Hope you guys enjoyed Olympia Live comp- competition. Thank you, Laura. I, I did. I enjoyed it. I just watched the amateur part for the women, and I watched the pro part for the women. And I, I, I was done. Also, uh, shout out to KL. He says it's Lori. He says Lori is looking buff on the panel. <laughs> That's why she wishes you'd be on the panel. Yeah. If you want to, you know, jump in and let me know. 
Um, also, Superman to, uh, G, G, 2024, he, he, he says, um, I think Sarah is kind of crossing the bodybuilding boy threes and, you know, needs to, you know, to dial it back. You know, the thing is, once you hit those boundaries, sometimes it's hard to dial it back. Because I remember, he said to me, they told, they want Julian McCartney to come in, in I think, in um, a particular condition. But she said she, when she trained, she had to dial it back herself. Yeah, I remember well, seeing her at the New York Pro when I first did the New York Pro years ago. And she said that uh, she didn't train legs for a long time because she had to dummy her legs down. So she just didn't train legs at all. She just didn't train them, you know, to get, to bring them down, to get to, to be able to compete in women's physique. Uh, and then she went from the New York Road to the Olympia, and the rest is history. Well, it's like when I, when I saw this, it's like to answer Dave's David's original question, should, should Sarah consider moving up to a women's bodybuilding? And for yeah. all the other people and for all the other people who are saying, oh, well, she should too. She just took the number one spot in WPD, and she's been one of the top competitors now for years. So there's no reason for her to make the jump. She's one yeah, of the very really she's, she's one of, she's one of the very top. So I mean, if she was getting like no placings, or if she was getting, like getting near the bottom of the pack, if I mean, then it would then it then it would Jones. It, it would make it would make sense for her to make a jump, but she's now she's repeatedly one of the top competitors, so it doesn't behoove her to consider a jump when she's one of the very best in the world where yeah, she is. Yeah, she could come in what 12, 13, 14. And, and, and again, and Lori, Lori knows this better than and everybody. And we've seen it at her show. There were some girls that you know moved from women's physique to women's bodybuilding at the Anaheim show that shouldn't have been in women's bodybuilding, should have stayed in women's physique, but. It's it's everybody can say that seeing that she won and seeing her in that physique crowd, but it's a different crowd when you get in the group room in the group group of body women, open bodybuilders like Lori, and then put them in that crowd. It's a whole different lane, right? You know, All you know, of like a sudden, their legs look hella small, like, a, like, like their legs are Maya. You know, those are girls who like 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 you were saying earlier that were placing at the bottom of women's physique. And then they went into women's bodybuilding. Like Maya was, I think, a Louisiana show. Like when they was in the New York Pro was in Tampa, came to Tampa and won it. Ashley went from women's physique, came to New York and won it. Some girls, there's girls out there like that. But it's like, I think Sarah is in the right lane that she needs to be in. And so is Natalia. I don't think they need to move in. Right, exactly. And I don't think what some people don't understand is there's a lot of girls have to start in physique to get your pro card because there's not a lot of open women's bodybuilding at the regional level. So when I had mm -hmm. to go, when I That's could qualify true. for nationals, I had to do a physique show, even though I wanted to be a bodybuilder, right? But only the only the only regional shows that had um, the only the only bodybuilding I had to go to nationals. That was the first show where I had they had women's open bodybuilding, and I of course I entered. But yeah. yeah, so sometimes like at first you gotta kind of start out in the physique, but then you make a decision once you get to nationals. You can you can you, are you gonna make that crossover? You know, are you gonna make the move? So and, and Tina um, was the same way. She would go into North Americans and she would place. You know, biggest girl out there would place second, third, fourth at nationals and North Americans. And as soon as she went over to women's bodybuilding, she went to Mr. International, she turned pro in women's um, bodybuilding. She just didn't think she was big enough. Mm -hmm. And so when she went over to women's bodybuilding, right away, she turned pro. So there's yeah, that yeah. line for girls, depending how big you are, what your stature is, this and the other, how you make that decision, whether you're going to make that move or not. Yeah, I knew when Saturday. I was the Nationals and all the physicos were like 148 pounds and they weighed me in at 160 and I was like, I'm a bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say that was Saturday, at, I, the guy looked at me and goes, you know you're a heavyweight, right? And I was, I was like... <laughs> yeah, because Saturday I, I interviewed Renee Milan. She's from Australia. She competed in the in the amateur Olympia because there was only it was one lady who won the overall. That was uh, Lisa Smith, who I interviewed also before. She won the overall, but because there was enough bodies, there was one lady I know named Sherry. She won compete in the open, but somehow I don't know it was some issue. She wasn't. Uh, she might not have got a regional or something like that, and that's why she couldn't compete in the open on the mass. At the uh, she did thirty five and over, but they didn't let her compete in the um, open part. I don't know. 
Um, then you, uh, I got a young lady who got interviewed this weekend. She got a pro card at the uh, Olympia. You know, she's a, a physique competitor. And I think I was talking with Renee. She said she's planning on maybe next year doing the um, right the the uh, Miss International because you know I think my friend uh, um, Yetta she competed in the I think it was a women's uh, uh, middleweight lightweight, but there was only her and another girl. But because it, with that show, if you can get at least five competitors or more in your in your class, you get a pro card. But because I think in Yellow's class, there was only two of them, she couldn't get a pro card. The girl who won a pro card, you know, she was qualified for the uh, uh, Rising Phoenix, but she turned it down. She looked more like a physique competitor. You know, she mm. great, great condition, great body. I forgot her name, but, you know, I interviewed the lady who competed with her at that show. She got her a pro card at USA's. Nationals coming up in a couple of months. You know, um, that could be an opportunity for a lot of those competitors who didn't get their pro cards. It's going to be harder for the ones overseas. They have to probably got to do the Lena Popa, uh, the, the, I think the, running, the main muscle fest. That is also Olympia and a pro qualifier. Because I remember that one lady who competed in the um, Olympia, Natalia Bastrova, she won both women's body and physique. And her physique, this woman, I can't believe it. I, keep, I can't believe this woman is 55, 56 years old. And she's just oh. I can. <laughs> I, I you know, I mean no, I, I just I mean her her physique is just crazy. I mean, and you know, there's some debate there where David, you were there, like you you talked to um Ann Gruber, you know, right before the show, and I feel like she should have got a little higher. I mean, her and a couple of ladies in physique, I I don't know, you know, what's I think yeah. you know, they were war conditioning, but then those girls that had the conditioning but still didn't crack the top ten. You know, there, there. I think there's something to be said for the politics of being new, you know, and like being new to the Olympia. Like Lori was saying about the judges maybe not even knowing you or not mm -hmm. seeing you improve. So I think that that with like Natalia Vestrova, um, Tracy Guile, Susan Graham. Um, a few other other ladies that that were, although Tracy was tenth and, and technically in the top ten, there are ladies that I think could have definitely placed higher if the judges had known them a little bit better. Um, I want to mention something real quick too about judging panels that they they really vary so much by region and by show, and it's just so being such a subjective sport. I, I feel for the athletes because they're just they walk in not really knowing where well, they're going to place. That part of your that should be part of your homework. I always know the judges in yeah. my town. So I know, like, if there's Sandy going to be there. I know, like, Sandy night. You start to you start to get to know, make it a point of, like, getting to know your judges. Do a little research, right? So, Lori, let me ask yeah. you a question. By saying that, did you know that Taylor was going to be the head judge? You know, I learned that at the show. And but I also made it a point to go up and introduce myself, and I also made it a point after the show that I walked straight up to him, and that's who I got my feedback from, no matter what my opinion of the situation was. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and what did you think of his feedback? Um, I thought his feedback was correct. Um, I was a little confused when I was told that I had some of the best conditioning he saw that day, and but I didn't crack top ten. Um, I go back and I see all my flaws, um, definitely, you know, so I see where I fell short a little bit too. I'm very realistic about what, you know, my, where I need to improve and what I need to do. But, um, yeah, you know, definitely the pro leagues are different. There's different, you know, it's who's got them. There's, there's girls who have a ton of hype behind them. There's, um, there's the, the ones they know that at you they see year after year. But yeah, um, it's on my only second pro show and I do try to get to know my judging. You know, I feel like I get to know, I, I learn about the judges a little bit in the panels, but yeah, it's still, I'm still relatively new to all of it. Like the politics, I just kind of absorb it. I take note, you know, and then I, and I move forward, you know, yeah. what was your Crazy. opinion? I'm curious about what your opinion was. Mine? Yeah. Uh, I don't think that promoters should judge shows. I don't think promoters should be head judges. Um, I knew there was a lot of controversy uh, that that Tina seen at the judging table between the black guy and, and Tamer 
it was an argument oh. at one point in time. It was an argument at one point in time because she's looking at him. And so, you know, mm. and, and, and I know I have a biased opinion because uh, but the things that I heard and the things that came out at the show being that Derek's client was, you know, and he's blatantly said in an interview that, you know, Derek and him are really good friends and his client was second, which I didn't see. And the girl who plays third was his client, which I think, you know, as a judge, you know, I'm not going to judge if, if I have a, and I, you know, I'm getting ready for to judge a show in November and I have clients in that show. If my clients are in that class, I am pulling myself out of that panel because oh, I course. don't think it's fair. Yeah. But again, that's what happened. And that's just facts, you know? So, you know, when people come up to mm. Tina and we're like, man, we didn't see that coming. Hunter Han Hunter came up to Tina and says, the only person she was worried about was Tina. I didn't see that in, in and so what we what happens we didn't see coming. Then as things start to trickle out, you know, and and Melanie is really good friends with Jake, was business partner with Jake at some, at some point in time. So they were going to have a conversation because, again, as a promoter, you should not be judging a show. I damn sure shouldn't be head judging the show. That's mm -hmm. like sitting there saying, you know, Jim Mayne is going to judge the show, or Steve's going to judge the show where they got clients in at a pro show. That should never ever happen. Never Definitely. ever happen. And yeah, I, I heard that at the You're end. Right. That totally right. The first time I'd ever come into that situation, so I had never seen that situation before. So I was just like, okay, noted. And, I, I, and, I, and I've known like people like when they had the Omaha Pro, you know, girls came up to Jack Tatone and was like, who's the head judge? Because that's very important. And as soon as they said Tamer's brother, everybody was like, shit, god damn it, <laughs> I picked the wrong yeah. show. Because <laughs> you know, <laughs> this, you this, almost said it was going to be first, second, and third. Because yeah. it's because. And and these girls know that. So, you know, you're absolutely right when it comes to head judges. I knew when yeah. I was an amateur and I did USAs in one year and I looked and I seen uh, uh, Lee Thompson to next to, to, to Jim Mangan. I knew I was coming in second. I knew I was going to win. I was like, fuck. You know, because <laughs> yeah, you know these Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, yesterday we had – Janine was on here, Janine Mikowski, and we talked about it a bit because she looked great. She should have been a top she, five. Yeah. yeah. I had her, I had yeah. had her top five. I yeah. had Janine and the girl, the Asian girl who was end up being fifth. I had Janine in that top five to six, which I was completely surprised that because when they did the call off, Lori was there. She was in the show. I was like, yeah. what the hell just happened? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what it just happened? It was so crazy. But again, yeah. well, like Jason yeah. said, we're in a very subjective sport and it's the definition of insanity sometimes of what we do. So all we can do is go back and, you know, it's like the Legion show I did. How many times do you see in a show where you have 23 guys in the class, but they only call out two? They call out two <laughs> guys in the in a class of 23. That's it. And then they had a second call out of guys, the guys of, I think it was seven of us or eight of us. I'm like, when does that happen? And especially for Olympia qualifier for 2025, it doesn't happen. Yeah, you know, now if, that's yeah. Billy, now if that's Billy or if that's Billy or Jim or Tyler or Steve, that's never going to happen. I've only seen it happen one time with Steve, and that's it. But it wasn't like those two guys were, like, clear-cut favorites. That's just what he did, and the head judge has the power to do that, which was crazy. And that's, me, you know, it's really kind of unfair to, like, the other top three or four competitors because as you pose people out, they start to fade or shine. Well, so and again, those... it's called comparisons for a reason. Yeah, and you get those. Because <laughs> uh, one thing I have to yeah. say about uh, Titans is they pose the hell out of us. <laughs> they just, yeah. like. That was probably one of the longest posts. I mean, yeah, I was they stoked work because that's usually that's the women's bodybuilding, they like they roll you in, they roll you out, and you're done. And I'm like, man, they just kept calling us out and calling us out. And I was like, this is awesome. I'm like, because yeah, I know him. Because you really get to see, you know, who starts to shine. Like, who's yeah, not that's sweating? That's that's who's hurt. holding it? Hunter said, I started sweating. She was tired. Tina's like, holy shit. Because they were working. Oh, I just fucking <laughs> held it, man. I was like, I ain't budging. <laughs> I'm like, fuck this. I didn't practice 45 minutes a day for nothing. <laughs> I am not sweating. <laughs> no, Tina was solid, man. But, yeah, there was a little sweat, you know. That, uh, you know, testament to how dry you are if you don't sweat, right? Right. You know, sweat I, left in you. I had a question to throw out to everybody, what they thought about this. What are, what is it, this is in relation to um, WPD Olympia. What do you all think of Sharonica Hinton getting third with a classic WPD look? In comparison to was, others, do you think that that was? Did you think that was deserved compared to all the other girls that were up there? Do you think that was wrong? 
Do you think that would be a positive? It would be a positive move, rewarding a classic WPD look like that at the biggest show, or do you no. think there were other women? Do you think other women deserved that better than her? You're absolutely right when you I was say really that. Pleased. Because if if we go off of what the the the, the podcast we had last week, right, of what Bob Sugar and yeah. what Isabel was talking about, right, that is the epitome of women's physique. Yeah, it's the absolute and epitome it's... of what Bob. When they went away from women's bodybuilding because the last year Iris won it, it was too hardcore, wasn't good on the eyes. Then, again, I'll repeat this over and over. When Sean says, when they made an announcement that women's bodybuilding was coming back, that's not going to be as hard. It's going to be a little softer, which Andrea is. She's the epitome of women's bodybuilding and what they want. But when you look at that, she is the epitome of what women's physique should be. And Boss with yeah. Bob, if you go back and look at the interview that Bob and Isabel talked about, that is what women's physique was supposed to be. That's when you had the, mm -hmm. what was the, the first ever one, the Dana Lynn Bailey. Dana Lynn Bailey. And yeah, we get, Dana Lynn Bailey and Lori was the epitome of what they wanted. And then it started getting harder. And that's why Linda bowed out. Linda Murray said, I do not want to take my body and make it this way so she bowed out because again there's this standard and then it started getting harder and harder and harder and harder and as it started getting harder and harder and harder it became less appealing to most people and that's now where you are here's the thing look at the women physique competitors look at sarah and look at natalia 